So today I'm really excited to uh, talk about something that I spent countless time and effort in and I went through it. So hopefully you all don't have to go through it. I'm going to be talking about notes apps, specifically just note taking in general, actually. Let's first and foremost, I'm going to bring up the note apps I will be talking about today. First and foremost, let me back up. Let me ask, I would love to know how you all are dealing with notes right now. What app do you guys use? Do you guys have a certain system in place? Do you just do paper and pen? Yeah. Would anyone care to share? Paper and pen, sticky notes everywhere. <laughs> sticky notes everywhere, paper and pen. Love it. Okay. All right. Awesome. Google. Google tasks. Okay. All right. Great. What about you, Eli? No unified solution. So it really depends on where the work started. Some things are going to go into the CRM as notes. Others are going to go into the project management software. And then if it's a more like I'm writing up documents into Google Docs. And then if I'm just trying to take notes during the middle of a meeting, which I put somewhere else, I might open up the notes app or the text edit apps. But no, I don't have anything clever that I'm using. Perfect. Okay. Sounds good. And you, John, you have anything you hit a share? He wrote it in the Just chat. coming in from, I can, yeah, I can be the voice of John for the next little bit. So John, who may not be able to come on voice, says no unified solution. I'm trying to see different options to consolidate all the notes into one place. Perfect. Sounds good. Okay. Let me bring up actually one of the note apps that I will be discussing on here. And that is... Okay, so these are the note apps that I'm actually going to be covering today. We have the, first I'm gonna talk about the simple players, right? Apple Notes, Google Keep, Microsoft OneNote. These are the ones that everyone tends to know about. And then I'm also, then I'm gonna deep dive into some of the other players that if you really wanna get more advanced, which is we have Evernote, Notion, and Obsidian. Obsidian is actually the one application I'm using now. I actually am, dibble and dabbling between this and some other note-taking apps. I decided to use it for this particular presentation. Yeah. So the first and foremost, I'm going to just talk about Apple Notes, right? Apple Notes, I'm going to click on that. Apple Notes is... Hey, uh, sorry, Brian, I don't know uh, if it's possible just to bump up the default font size or something like that. Just yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate system that. Too small. Yeah, definitely. Apologize for that. Thanks for letting me know. Let's see if I can make it bigger. Yeah, that's the business. Go. Good. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So pretty much the first one I want to talk about is, is Apple Notes. I think that's a lot of people who have Apple devices, such as iPhones or MacBooks, probably are aware of this, or if not, it should be, it's right on the phone. It's, it comes with the, with the MacBooks and the iPhones and it's some of the pros of it. It's stay on your phone, right? It's simple to use. You can literally just, if you pick up your phone, you click on the app, you can quickly jot down some notes. The other thing, I, it's, it's a beautiful app. We all know Apple is known for like the stylistic choices and that's just one app that doesn't fail on that. Cons, right? Cons would be, it's Apple only. Again, going back to, you can't use it if you have other devices such as a, a, a Android. And while there's some workarounds, you really can't use it on a PC or it does just, it's just not as smooth on a PC as it is on a Mac. Yeah, and then it doesn't have the best web client. So you are tied to your devices. If you happen to be on a, at a public computer, you lose all your devices, you still need to access your notes. There's, there's a web client, but it's not the best. It's not as fluid as some of the other major players on there. Yeah, so I'm gonna take a step back and gonna pause and wanna know, does anyone have any questions, any thoughts about it? I will, again, I want this to, I'm just, I wanted this to be a conversation. I'm talking through this, these things. I'm going to talk about my experience, but I want to hear from you all as well about the note apps that you like and what are your thoughts on some of these and ask questions along the way. So yeah, any, anyone has any thoughts so far? Well, I can start this. So as someone who's fully in the Apple ecosystem, I think the thing that I find that is most magic about Apple notes is the fact that it, will sync very smoothly and easily between the phone, the mobile version of it and the desktop version. So I use it all the time. Basically when I'm going to start a webinar, I'll copy the bio of the person into notes on my desktop and then load it up on my phone. So I can read 
the bio while I'm still sharing a screen. So that kind of live syncing is super duper handy. And it's the thing I think I most like about that app. Agreed, agreed. That's also a great benefit. And to your point, Eli, all, all these apps that I am going to be talking about, because I think I find that super important, syncing, being able to work on your desktop and then being on the go and having a mobile client is super important. And yes, Apple does it really well and some of these other major players. So if you're considering, or if you have been thinking about going to other notes apps, or maybe because it lacks syncing, these are the ones I'm going to show you today actually have a syncing capability, which I think may even surpass Apple at, at, in the, in the back and forth of getting your notes from desktop to mobile. So yeah. The other little hack I've found actually with Apple notes is it's also got quite a robust scanning document. So basically you can take a picture of a document yes. um, and instead of just taking a picture, it'll crop out all the parts around the document. And even if you took it off at a bit of an angle, it'll cue it to try and make it all seem straight and smooth. So that's a nice other little feature built within Apple notes. Yes. Yes. I'm actually, you know what? I would have loved to even demo some of these things on my phone. I am actually using my phone as my, my webcam today. So I'm not able to do that, but what I will do is just give you, so I, I've actually been using Apple notes because it's just been the simple choice. And again, it's on my device and I do like the idea of being able to pull it up at a whim's notice and it just works already. So with further ado, this is just some of my Apple, I'm going to share my Apple notes, hopefully, but it has, the other thing it has is it does a folder structure and then within the folder structure, you can do a drop down. And then there's also, they recently added tagging. So tagging is a much better way. So for example, I went to this, uh, this place for brunch and I really liked it. And then I decided to just put a little bookmark. And then I tagged it. I said, oh, it was in the location it was in, <clears throat> it's food. I put demo because I'm in my demo tag and then places. So this is just like my structure of like how I um, organize my notes. But I tag, tagging is a serious like thing with notes. So to me, I think if one of the key things with notes is knowing how to tag. So again, this is, I'm not only am I touching on the actual note applications, I'm talking, I want to talk to like, how do you take good notes, right? How do you able to, because anyone could take notes. The hard part is retrieving it afterwards when you need it. I forgot who, well, I, I believe you were saying that you still do it on paper and pen, which is great. So I'm curious, are you able, how does it come when you need those notes that we need to retrieve them at a later point? Do you, are you able to, do you find yourself able to find the notes or are they at times like, oh, where did I put it? What page did I put it? Or what notebook did I put it in? Uh, so I date all the notebooks. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay. If I remember the date or the month, then I go back to that. But I do use the Apple notes just for personal or to keep past right. stuff. But for the most part, I just put things in notebooks. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. And but same I'm here. I'm out of space on my shelf with all these notebooks. So like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, we should. And then to what Eli was talking about. So all these notes that you have currently, you can totally, there is a scanning feature in, in Apple Notes, which I love. I'm on the desktop now, but the great thing is you can scan the document. And because again, Apple just works great with their devices, I can click scan document and then it can take my phone and say, hey, pull your phone up. Oh, it, it actually messed up my camera as a result of that. So give me one second. I lost you all. all right. The cameras are fighting each other. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Let me give me one second. You know what I'm going to. Okay. It's a little bit blurry because I'm using a, my laptop camera. I, I like using my phone camera just because it's the camera quality is better, but we'll make do. But yeah. So back to what I was saying, I actually, let's do this. I actually, my handwriting is sloppy, but I'm going to do a little scanning thing now with my phone because I actually wrote down some quick. I jotted down some notes from a meeting I had earlier today. And let's say I wanted to get that in there. My phone automatically turns into a camera, scans it. So I'm going to scan the document and then I'm going to save it. And then it just puts it right on there. Oh, wait, you guys didn't even see it because I'm not sharing. <laughs> Apologies. I'm all over the place today. 
All right, let's try it again. All right, can you all see my screen? Yes. Yeah, is it, do I need to make it bigger or is, is this good? Let me know if it, you can't see anything, but to go back at it again. So I'm gonna scan the document right from the desktop. It automatically goes to my phone, turns my phone into a camera to scan it. I'm putting it on top of the paper. I'm scanning the paper now. And just like that, to your point, Eli, I'm gonna save it now. Now that I scanned it, boom, it just pops right on the on my computer. It's a great way to take your paper notes and put it right onto a digital format. So uh -huh. Brian, once I've got that note there as mm -hmm. an image, is that text searchable or is that just something that's more of a static image? Ah, that's a good point. Uh, let's try it. I don't know if the Apple Notes has OCR, but let's find out. I think it does have OCR technology. Uh, Sorry, what does OCR mean? Could you just... Oh, remind? yeah. OCR is where the computer, it scans like your handwriting notes and it automatically converts it into readable text that it will understand. So if I wrote to your point to my notes, I wrote Tuesday and Thursday, for example, on there. If I search for Tuesday, it'll know, it'll look at my notes and say, it'll find that Tuesday on the notes. And yeah, Apple does have it. I haven't, I think they recently added it. I could be wrong, but so this. Yeah, that was a I bit of a leading it. question. I believe it's a recent addition as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I haven't played with the new OCR technology yet with it, but I believe it's searchable. I believe I just, if I search it, I think it takes some time to process it, but if I search in maybe another five, 10 minutes or so for some of the words on here, it'll pop right up. So yeah. So to answer your question, yes. And thank you for the, uh, the alley-oop, Eli. <laughs> but yeah, so that's Apple Notes. I'm going to jump right ahead now and go into... I'm actually going to skip some of these and go to the Google Keep because Google Keep is the the next sort of like on your phone already included on your devices. I'm going to click on Google Keep and Google, Google Keep is pretty much it's Google's version of note taking. And so what is it? Let's see if I can pull up. I'm not really a huge Google Keep user. Let's see if I can one second and I can just pull up some of it of some form. One second, on the Google account information here. I just want to take off, archive it. Okay, great. So I'm just going to quickly go over Google Keep. So Google Keep is pretty, it's pretty, it's a pretty cool note-taking app as well. You can also do reminders. So if you have like maybe a grocery list, you can easily turn into check check boxes in the notes app, which you can also do in Apple Notes. I, I didn't mention. Show check boxes. There we go. Great. Et cetera, et cetera. You get the point. You can check it off. Google keeps is uh, some of the pros about it. It's part of your Google account, right? So if you use like email, Google Calendar, or any of anything from Google, it's easy to get to. It's available not only for Android but they also have an, an iOS app. So you can use it on an iPhone or iPad as well. And yeah, what cons I would say, cons for Google Keep is it's only a web client. There's no actual desktop client. So in order to use it, you have to, I have to go to keep.google.com to use it. And what does that mean also? That means if I don't have internet connection, then I don't have my notes. So that's a con as well. And yeah, the for me, the last con is Google has a history of killing products. So one minute they'll bring something out, they'll try it out. And the next minute they'll just get rid of it because for whatever reason, it didn't work out. And now you have to find a new alternative. So they don't have a history of keeping or being consistent with their products. So those are some of the pros and cons that I have for Google Keep. But That's a um, really yeah, insightful thing to say, like where if you're going to invest all that time into organizing and collecting all your notes into one place, and then there is a possibility it may just disappear underneath exactly. you. That's total concern. Yeah, exactly. And that's probably also one of the reasons why I don't invest in it. But also, like I said, I like having a local copy. I don't like relying on a on an internet connection because let's say I have my internet goes out and I have a big meeting in person and I can't pull it up. That's that would be pretty traumatizing to me. So yeah, that's Google Keep in a nutshell.
I'm going to take a step back again and pause for a second and see if anyone has any thoughts, opinions, questions before I go on to the next note app. And then as I go on, I'm going to talk about a different way of thinking about notes. So some of these are more of the simpler note app, note taking apps. So it's more of a straightforward way of doing it. As we get deeper and deeper into the note apps, like the one I'm using on the screen now, which is called Obsidian, there's a different process involved into it. I'm actually looking forward to, to eventually getting to that. But yeah, the other ones are more like pretty layman's terms a folder structure, you make a note, you could put it in a folder, you can probably add a tag to it, it's searchable, you can add documents, and you can even add checklists. With it. So those are like, that's it in a nutshell for the Google and the Apples of notes. And then, and also Microsoft OneNote as well, which we'll touch on, which is a slightly to me more advanced than the other two players. Great. I'm gonna go into Microsoft OneNote and pretty much what Microsoft OneNote is. So it's a little, it's a little bit more advanced than, in my opinion, than the, the Apple Notes and the Google Key. Microsoft OneNote to me seems, if I had to describe it, it's, a, it's, more, it's more pretty much in regards to how you can actually write on a paper and pen. And the way, I, what I mean by that, it's more free form. Let me see if I have Microsoft Notes actually on my PC and I can show you all what I mean. This is actually one of the note apps I was using at some point. And then we'll talk about the pros and cons about it. Okay. Okay, so this is an example. So I do have it up. Uh, let me just make it bigger. Great, so Microsoft OneNote is a little, let me create a new note. So the structure about it, one thing I like is you can type anywhere. So I, it really is more like a paper format. So this is a note and I want to put something over here and I can move it here. However, I want to, however, I want to process the note the same way we write notes on paper. We may put some notes to the side. We put notes on this side. So it's a really, it's like a canvas where you can choose how you want to make the note. This is another note. You can do all types of formatting. You want to, I want to add a to do here. Things to do after the meeting, to so on and so forth. Again, one of the re reasons I like it is because of this free form way of going about it. I can add documents, pictures, pretty much everything anything you could think of into Microsoft OneNote. Microsoft OneNote is a really powerful tool. I, if you wanna move outside of the simple um, note-taking apps, Microsoft OneNote is definitely a, a next step up for, for people who are really serious about note-taking and who want that feel of that pen and paper type of uh, way of taking notes. So I highly recommend Microsoft OneNote. So some of the pros, again, as I was mentioning, it's free form, it's Microsoft. Um, which is a big backing. Microsoft um, OneNote's been around for ages. It's not going anywhere. I don't, I totally don't, I don't see it going anywhere. I don't see them like stopping it. It's free to an extent, I should say. While it's free, the caveat here is it uses your OneDrive storage. OneDrive is Microsoft's version of cloud storage, the same way you have your Dropbox and it's like Microsoft's version of Google Drive, Dropbox, et cetera. They give you 15 gigabytes free. And if you want more, you have to get Microsoft 365, which is the whole office suite, Excel, PowerPoint, Word, et cetera. And then with that, you can have way more storage for your notes. 15 gigabytes is a lot because again, as, as long as you're not putting tons of like pictures in here, pictures would probably take the biggest space with in terms of gigabytes and megabytes in, in size. So as long as you're not putting those type of things in your notes or, or a lot of them, 15 gigabytes is really a lot to last you some time. So that's the only caveat with the free version of a uh, Microsoft OneNote. And then again, if you choose to upgrade, you get the whole suite, you get all of Office, but it's a monthly subscription. So it's not like a one-time paid and forget it 
type of fee. It's a monthly subscription where you're paying for Microsoft Office and you're paying for, I think, a terabyte of storage, which is astronomical. But yeah, that's Microsoft OneNote in a nutshell. And again, if anyone has, I'm going to pause and let anyone ask any questions or any suggestions or let me know. Maybe you all use some of these apps that I mentioned already, such as Microsoft OneNote. So yeah, if anyone has anything to add, I'm all ears. Because again, I want this to be opportunity for all of us to hear each other's thoughts and learn about what apps you're using or what do you think about some of these apps and how it's approached. Or if you have, if you want to deep dive into more granular questions about the these note apps that I've been talking about. Okay. All right. I'm going to go on. Okay. Right, so we're going to get into some of the other players. Now I'm going to talk about Notion. Notions are really, it's a, it's one of the ones that's been getting really popular. Notion is, a, it's another one of those canvas types app. It has a high learning curve, but once you get it. So Notion is, let me see if I can pull it up and where it describes it. Cause I feel like Notion is, it's hard to explain it. And it's more, it's, a, it's this, it's a workspace where you can, it's a database in a way, and you can, you can get really deep with one, with Notion where you can. And you have to be very mindful of that. This is like the splash page of Notion. I'm going to go into an actual Notion page. People like make it into a hub of theirs. Some people call it like a digital brain. There's many ways to go about it. But for example, you want to keep recipes in here. And again, think it's in a sort of uh, a database form. So I can add a new note. I can tag a dinner. I can say, let me see what we're doing. So we're talking. And then from there, I can go inside the note and then go deeper into it where I can add, I can add the recipe. I can even pick from a template. So if I go back out and I go, they actually give you templates to choose from. Add a new note. And I can create a template right here. And then pretty much always oh, the templates. There's no templates to this one, but you can pretty much add a template in the notes which is great. Notion is a very powerful tool. You can do a journal, reading list. There's so many ways to do it. One of the ways that I used Notion in the past was like to remember faces, right? You meet people and you want to keep like a, oh, who is that person again? You can keep it as a way to meet people. You can open up like a sort of a profile of them and say, oh, these are things I remember. They love to cycle or has a order right it's just like it's good way to pull up things and get information and again you can get really if you hit this plus right there in notion you can see all the different options you can do so you can make a page within a page and this is where it gets a little sticky because if you don't use notion you can kind of get lost in it so if i make a page all it does is make another let's say i want to call the note list of her favorite Boots. And I can choose template, and then I can pick from different templates. So these are some of the templates that they have to make it easy, so you don't have to start from scratch. You want to do class notes. You can use it as a job application, a database. You can really use Notion for tons of things, and you can just customize it to how you want it. List of our favorite foods. So since it's going to be food, I want to do a food emoji for this particular thing. And then I can go back to Cali and now list of her favorite foods. And I can just go in there and I can have it listed. And again, you have to be very careful because you can make another page if we're in there and you can just keep going and you can get into a rabbit hole. So that's the only thing I advise when you with an app like Notion is to start simple, but it's very powerful. You can do so much with it. So that's the pro with it. What's the con? Going back to your notes live online. Notion has, it's been growing super fast. It's a newcomer in the game and a lot of people have been using it, but that also means they've been having a lot of downtime and they don't have, they don't have offline support. So what does that mean? That pretty much means, again, going back to what I said earlier about Google Keep, 
if you don't have an internet connection or a notion is down when you need it the most and that's happened, you can't access your notes. And I don't know about you, but for me, that's a little unsettling. So what Notion has done though, which is great, is they also have good exporting controls. If I click this, I can go and export my notes. So sometimes maybe before a meeting, I'm worried that Notion is not gonna have the best support. Like they're gonna have go down and I may lose access to the notes when I need it. I can export it into a PDF or Markdown, excuse me. And then I can, and then that way you can view it there. So this is Notion. Again, Notion is a really powerful app. Oh, we have a note on me. Let's go back to that. Yeah. So this is a take a dummy note on me. But again, this is just like again how you can use it. And yeah, that's Notion. I love Notion. I really do. I hope they bring offline support soon. I think once they do that, it's gonna be probably a game changer for Notion. Does anyone have any questions about Notion or about the whole concept of Notion in general or any other note questions? And let me know as well if you all want me to touch because I, I'm touching on the apps, but if you want to hear more about the actual process of note-taking, we can totally talk about that as well because there is a process of note-taking that I think is super beneficial to, to be good with note-taking. And again, it's all about the being able to retrieve the information. You can take as many notes as you want, but if you can't pull it up when you need it the most, it's useless. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to close out a notion and I'm going to go into Evernote. I don't know, you all, I feel like you all may have heard of Evernote. Evernote is another popular player in the game. Evernote is tried and true. It's, uh, it's one of the first big note-taking apps to hit the scene actually before the Notions and all these other ones that I mentioned. And a lot of these other applications, like even Apple's have, I think, been taken from Evernote. So Evernote at one point was like the top note-taking app to get. It fell off from the graces as of lately, but it's still a great solid player. What is Evernote? Again, is it's more of a simple approach to notes but it's very, it's very vast in how it handles the notes. It has clients everywhere. So again, what you think of a device you have, it has support for it, whether it's Android, iOS, Macintosh, C, they have on the web client. So anything you can think of, Evernote is there. Now, Evernote supports tagging, they support templates. They pretty much have the note taking aspect down pack. The basis is really great. They have a good basis on the notes and how they, how they work and process the notes. So Evernote is definitely strong. However, as of lately, it's been pretty, because they, they're trying to be profitable. There are a, a subscription base and they have a free tier, but the free tier is very limited. I think it's only 60 megabytes per note. And that's great if you're just doing text, but once you start adding like documents and pictures into your note, you're going to hit that limit real quick. And then they're going to ask you to upgrade into the subscription. If you all don't mind paying a monthly fee to take your notes, Evernote's a solid player. I personally want to look at more of cheaper options or free options. Evernote's a little bit more, in my opinion, one of the pricer options, but it gets the job done. It definitely gets the job done. And again, you can totally use the free tier, but it's very limited. I think it's only two devices support as well. So you, if you use it on your phone and your laptop and you have a second laptop or a second com computer, you can't use it on that computer no more because it's a two device limit unless you, you pay for the monthly subscription. So that's Evernote, but yeah. I'm actually looking forward into getting into the app I'm using now, which is Obsidian. So what is Obsidian really is another new player in the game. I'm going to click on this. And this is one that I'm actually looking for. This is one that I'm highly been considering. I'm again, I personally use Apple notes because it's, you know, I felt it was just simple enough and it was like something I can pull in and take my notes relatively quick. I use the other ones as well. I've done tons of note-taking research and, and looking to like the best note-taking um, applications. And I eventually settled on Apple Notes, but 
I've been looking at Obsidian and I'll give you the reasons why. First and foremost, what is Obsidian, right? It's more, to me, it's more than a, no, uh, a note-taking app. It's a, it's perfectly said, a knowledge base. Um, the way it works, it works similar to the way our brains work. So our brains do these lot of linking. So you see someone's and it reminds you, like you see a shirt and it may remind you of a person you met who had that shirt on. And the way our brains work in general is it does these linkings of information to retrieve other information based on that. So you, there's a smell and that smell incites a, a memory. And Obsidian pretty much is like that. So I'm going to go into Obsidian now. One of the big things it does is that you can see what I was doing is deep linking. So what is deep linking? The same way, again, I made all these notes. So let's say I'm going to create another one. Let me go back and give an example. So I'm going to go into edit mode, right? So the way deep linking works is as you're making a note, within the note, you can link it to other information. We're talking about notes. I'm going to say, what's a no another note app? I'm going to, I'm just going to say demo. If I two, two, do put two brackets, it automatically says, Hey, here's some of the notes that you already took that it knows that I'm trying to link it with something else, another note in my, in the obsidian system or create a new one. In this case, I want to create a new note called demo, but I want it to link. So now I put demo in these brackets and I press return. It knows. Now it's a new link. I click on it. Now I have a new note called demo. It's still linked to the previous note, but it's its own note as well. And the way Obsidian works as well is it uses Markdown. I'm not sure if anyone's heard of Markdown before. Does, do anyone, does anyone know what Markdown is or have heard of it in any form? Yeah. So what Markdown pretty much is, it's what's the best way to, to describe it. Markdown is pretty much a form of text that's relatively new in the game it's but it allows you to do more with your text and why is it so much why is it love so much it's because it's a very simple things are text-based at the same time so let me go back actually and show you explain it better what markdown is so i'm going to go into my obsidian note what is markdown so yeah Markdown is a lightweight mark markup language for creating formatted text using a plain text editor pretty much what Markdown is, it allows you to, I think I have another Markdown. Yeah, great. I have a Markdown editor in here. Sim from simple text, you can create things. So this is a Markdown editor where it will show me. So I can, on a simple text edit, I don't need Microsoft Word. I don't need nothing. I just need what all the, the simple note text app. And then I can put things, again, going back to linking. One of the ways I link is I say, demo, and this is how it looks. This is how it's going to, what I write here, it looks different from here. So if I want to cap, if I want to make it a header title, I do the pound signs or hashtag, whatever you want to call it. And then as you can see, it gets bigger and I do it a second. I do two hashtags instead of three and it changes the size. So it's a way of, of manipulating text in a way that it's still readable if you for some reason, don't have the, you just want to look at it as a simple text reader. So it's, and all these files are local. So one of the great things about Obsidian is you own the actual files. The same way, again, you may not want it to go, you can choose to, if you want it to go in the cloud, you want it to sync with different devices, you can do that. Or you can just keep it on your computer local because again, notes are a private thing, right? People put some of their most private things in notes and some people may not trust that going into another server through some means of Dropbox, Google Drive, whatever the companies who are hosting it are using. So that's one of the things about I love about Obsidian and this is particularly what I love about the Markdown language. It's used a lot by programmers, but it's a way to, it's a simple way to, to write down your information, but still be able to manipulate. Because again, if you don't have a bold or underline or italics type of uh, formatting, like you're not using Microsoft Word, you can still do that with Markdown. So again, if I wanted to italicize, I would just put a asterisk on each end. And then 
Oh no, that's so, I'm sorry, that's bold. So bold is the asterisk. And if you want to italicize, I believe it's a dash. Let me try that. I'm put a dash on each end and lo and behold, oh wait, it's one dash maybe. I'm still getting used to the markdown language as well. As well. Okay, so let's try, let's see what I did wrong. Italicize, okay. So I was right, it was an asterisk, but it was one asterisk. So one asterisk, um, italicize it, two makes it bold. And if I wanna underline, I would do underscore demo underscore. Let's see if I do two underscores. No. Okay. Let's see what I'm doing wrong. This app makes it easy, but yeah, see, yeah, I, I did have it. I'm not sure why it, why it didn't go through, but underscore on each side would underline it. Not sure why it's not underlining on this end, but but yeah, but pretty much again. To wrap it up, that's what Markdown is. I don't know if that makes sense. Is, is, is that clear? Please let me know if, if I can totally talk about it more or I can discuss it more if, if I'm not being clear on what Markdown is. Okay. All right. So next, I'm going to go back to Obsidian, right? So Obsidian basically is a digital brain of sorts. So again, doing all these like linkings and these deep linkings, it tells you when I'm in a note, hey, this note is also talked about in two other places or one other place. So in this case, I click on this, it takes me back to the initial note that it was linked to. And here comes the cool part. If I open this graph view, I don't have much in here because this is just like starting out, but as you get more, it gets really, really fancy. You just see this whole globe of all your notes and how they link with each other. So in this case, I have notes presentation. And it says, hey, one note, these are all the notes that are linking to each other. So again, if I go into demo and I want to say markdown, I want to link it with, a, I want to make another mark, note called markdown, markdown. And then we're in there, click on that. And say this is a markdown discussion. I go here again, it just shows all the linking that's happening. Now, markdown is here and it's part of the demo, but I can also go back to markdown used in here notes app. It's also used in another app that uses it. So I'm linking that note. I already have a note called Beard Note app, which is or initially from my link note over here. And I go here again, as you can see, it starts linking all these notes. So here's note app is linking to Markdown, which is also linking to the notes presentation. And it shows you all these little connections. So when you pull up your notes, eventually when you start pulling up your notes and all these things are like linking, you'll be able to find notes much easier because of that linking. So again, maybe you have a color here and we're in that color it reminds you of someone and then it also reminds you of this and then that reminds you of that and it just has this huge globe of linking and let me go back to show you what exactly a full a map would look like on here let me go back to that website this is an example of what it could potentially look like of like how the linking would happen so yeah i think obsidian is a really powerful note-taking app i really am just scratching the surface with it I think some of the pros, again, you can make it yours. It has extensions, so you can really customize it to how you want it. The con is also you can customize it to how you want it because it, it loses that simplicity and it can become overcomplicated. And again, part of the whole reason of a note app is to take a note. So you don't want to get, you know, going to the rabbit hole of trying to customize a note-taking app. And then before you, before you get your more focus on the, customization in the actual notes. So that's one of the things about Obsidian, but it's free. One of the things I do love, it's 100% free. Again, everything is you own the notes. You don't have to like do no export. The notes live on your computer. They're offline. You don't have to worry about retrieving them. Even if Obsidian goes out of business, you will have these notes forever. They will be in a plain text format with maybe some brackets here and there or the asterisks to like convert it into how you want it in terms of like bold and underlying. 
but it's still readable. And that's why I think Obsidian is a really good player in the game. I'm gonna, um, we're going up time soon. So I'm going to quickly touch on some other ones that I think are noteworthy competitors to all these. So let me get back into. So the Bears Notes, another note taking app that pretty much is similar. It uses Markdown as well. The same concept where you know you can create certain things around the text to convert it into like bold, underline, asterisk, like things like that, outline form. And that's pretty much again what Markdown is just you're just adding these things inside your current text to convert it into more of a stylist, stylistic approach to your notes. And again, the pro of that is because it's, you don't have to rely on an application, a specific application to open it. You can open it with any text, anything that reads text. That's, and that's what Bears does that as well. It just makes it in a much prettier format. It reminds me of Apple Notes on like steroids. Uh, we touched on Notion, OneNote, but we touched on all of them. And then the last one is Drafts. Drafts is not really a note-taking app, but rather a, a start, a starting point to take a note. And that's where Drafts is really great at. So I'm going to see, do I have Drafts on here? I believe so. Let me see if I have the Drafts note. I don't have it. thought I had it, but... I can explain them. Drafts, they don't have a desktop application. What Drafts is, it's really a mobile application where all it does is it's, its main process, it's speed. It's pulling it up and jotting a note down immediately. So you open it, you click on it, or you press on it, automatically just a sheet pops up for you to take a note. And it says their job is to get your note, get the note out of your head into the device. And then from there, you can figure out where you want it to go afterwards. So drafts is not your main note. It's more of a, the mm -hmm. first step. And then afterwards, they're very customizable where they allow you to bring it to where you want to be, bring it to. Whether you want to bring it to Apple Notes, you want to bring it to a reminder, you want it to go into a different application. So drafts is pretty much, let me go to the website so you can see it. Yeah. So drafts pretty much is just basically focused on catching the information and helping you put the information where you actually want it, whether what application you want it or what reminder you want it, you want it to go to. So yeah, that's a great thing. Draft works actually great with all these note apps I was talking about. It's a great starting point to just quickly get these thoughts out of your head and fast into the, uh, your device or into your note taking application of choice. So that's what Drafts is. Yeah, and in a nutshell, that is like the demos of the, the note-taking apps that I find to be the top players in the game. Yeah, I thank you again. I wanna take a pause and hear again if anyone has any questions or, or thoughts or concerns about these, these players in the game. Thank you again for your time. It was my pleasure to speak with all of you. And feel free to look out for more exciting events. This is right now I'm focused on GTD series, getting things done. And so I'm focusing on notes on this series. And I hope to uh, next one to talk about maybe tasks, to-do to -do list reminders, like those, that category. Thank you again, y'all.